Mm -hmm. That was great. So. Mm -hmm. oh, we thank God. We yes, thank so God. friends, uh, this is uh, Sir Collins to take us through English. Papa Collins, you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, as usual, let's start with our dictation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, we, need, we need to spell some words. Yeah. Okay, so the very first word. Are we ready, please? Yes, sir. Good. The first word is collateral. Collateral. You know, security you use when you go in for loans and other things. So collateral. Second, in fact. In fact. Third is acquitted. He was acquitted and discharged. So the word is acquitted. The next word, efficiency. Efficiency. Number five, audition, audition. Six, prestige, prestige. Seven, Procrastinate. Procrastinate. Please, the eight didn't come. No, I think yeah. that doesn't work. No, my eight. The eight. eight is the eight is alleviate. Alleviate. So you had alleviate, right? Yes. Yeah. Good. Then nine, infallible. Infallible. Ten, applaud. 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 Eleven. Eleven. Redundant. Eleven. No, eleven. Yes. Twelve. Eleven oh, is eleven. redundant. Apa eleven or more? Eleven. Can you hear me? No. Hello. No, that's nice. Something. Hello. Hello. Eleven, number eleven is not clear. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Eleven is redundant. Okay. Redundant. All right. Twelve. Privilege. Privilege. 13, flatter, don't flatter me, <laughs> flatter. 14, embarrassment, 
embarrassment. Fifteen. Commodity. Commodity. Sixteen. Manageable. Manageable. Seventeen. Ascertain. Ascertain. You need to ascertain. the veracity or otherwise. So ascertain. Then the final word is hurricane. Hurricane Jampu, Hurricane Mante, Hurricane Collins. So hurricane. Please pause the 18. 18 is hurricane, hurricane. Okay. All right. Okay, so. This is the first word. In fact, two words, please. So if you join them, it is wrong. Two words. Mm, okay. That's good. Yes. So you mark and then you tell me your score. Papa, I have 16. 16. Which, yes. which two words <laughs> eluded you? In fact, and uh, acquitted. That's great. That's great. Yes. In fact, please, two words. Mm -hmm. Two words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So if you are writing your essay and then you do that, we underline or we circle it and then we deduct half. Oh. Yes. Good. Then a word like privilege. Oh. Privilege. People use D, G, E, and then P, R, E, and then so let us take note of privilege. the words such as that, privilege. Oh, okay. Privilege. Okay. Embarrassment. Embarrassment, yes. Double R, double S. <laughs> yes. All right, 18, 18, 18. Okay, 17. Okay, 16. Well, one person <laughs> said he has 16. Any other person? Yes. 16. 16. Yes. Okay, great. 15. Okay. All right. Please let's let's take note of these words, okay? And then make, use okay. them in sentences. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So today we are going to look at uh, reading comprehension. Comprehension. Yes. How do we tackle questions on comprehension? So.
So we have comprehension answering techniques. Can you see the screen, please? Yeah. Very good. So let's start right away. At every scoring point, half a mark is always deducted on every grammatical mistake that a candidate makes. For this reason, when a candidate writes his, his answer to a question, he should check and make sure his grammar is correct. Here, bad spelling is not penalized. I take that again. Bad spelling is not penalized unless it results to change of word or change in the function of a word. For example, um, sorry about, for example, if a candidate writes, the first one is supposed to be C-H-S-C-H-O-L. S-C-H-O-L. I'll correct it before I send it to you for you to print it out. So if a candidate wants to write school, but omits one of the O's and uses S-C-H-O-L, he will not be penalized. However, if a candidate writes advice, that is S-E, I can say advise, instead of advice, half mark will be deducted from his answer score since no. the spelling mistake leads to a verb instead of a noun. I hope we are okay. Yeah. Very good. Other examples are sight for sight. You remember the homonyms and then homophones that we did. So S I G H T. Okay, S I G H T. Okay, sense of sight. And then S I T, a place. I'm visiting the website. Okay, so if you go and then use them interchangeably, the meanings also change. So you will lose a mark. You will be here. Yeah, you actually lose it. And then our Almighty lose for lose. Okay, the meanings would definitely change. F A R E, fair for fair, then waste for waste. You see this? Once you do that and the meanings change, definitely you'll be penalized. But for school, if you omit the O and then one O and then it's S C H O L, we give you the mark because the S C H O L doesn't give us any other <laughs> word anyway. So we know. Yes, so the, for that one, you are uh, allowed the mark. Okay, so let's take no but for the homophones and the homonyms and the others, please let, let, let us let us try and then use them properly. <laughs> mm. The next point. Certain words are underlined. And candidates are asked to give other words or phrases which have the same meaning and can replace them in the passage. It is important for the candidate to read the instructions very well to find out whether the word or phrase demanded would fit into the passage or not. Because when you look at the past questions, you realize that for all the comprehension questions, you'll be given some words from the passage and then you are asked to give a word or a group of words which will mean the same as the words given to you and may also fit into the passage when you use them to replace the original words. In answering such questions, what do you do? A. The candidate should make sure that words chosen can fit into the passage. Very important. If not, he will score zero, even if it will have the same meaning as the word underlined. For this reason, 
if the word given is a noun, the selected word or answer should also be a noun and not a verb. If it is a verb, the selected word should be a verb and not a noun, thus and vice versa. If it is in the present tense, the answer must also be in the present tense. And if it is in the past tense, your guess is as good as mine. The answer must be in the past tense. The second, if the underlined word carries an article, and for article A and V, these are the articles. The T-H-E is the definite article, the boy. It means you are referring to a specific one. And then the indefinite ones, a eh, and then an, so a boy. Okay. Thank you. All right. So if the underlined word carries an article and both the article and the word are underlined, the selected word or answer should take an appropriate article. If on the other hand, only the word is underlined, then the selected word should not take an article. For example, if in the passage there is a sentence like, and I quote, the man was a master in his field. And you realize that a master has been underlined. An appropriate word which has the same meaning in this context is expert. However, expert alone cannot score. It will attract zero. Ooh. The correct form will be an expert. An expert because the underlined one has an article. So make sure you also use a proper article which will fit into the passage. So I said the correct form will be an expert. Since an expert cannot fit into the passage. Um, okay. If on, so let me try and then put it back into the sentence. The man was an expert in his field. The man was an expert in his field. But if I say the man was expert in his field, realize that the article is missing. So you score zero for that. If on the other hand, master alone is underlined in the passage, then because of the word a, expert won't score. And I question the I, I have here why? Why? Anybody to explain? Grace. Yes. You want to talk? <laughs> yeah, just like what you said. You said because he has an attic, a master. Okay. On his foot. So we should okay. we should not talk. We should also use the article and expert. Okay, but if there's fine. no air there or an air there, then we don't want we still we do, we don't have to use the and we can also use expert. So depend That's on fine. the whatever is given. That's fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Let us have a look at another example. As a result of the daily devaluation of the city, there is an upward surge in prices of imported goods. And we have the underlined group of words there, upward surge. This time around, the article and, uh, and sorry, has not been underlined. The correct word, which means the same as upward surge and increment into the passage is increase. 
though rise means the same as upward surge. Rise here will score zero because we have the a and an, the article already in the sentence, which has not been underlined. So if you go and use rise, which begins with an R, a consonant, it means we are going to have there is an rise, which doesn't sound <laughs> okay. Okay, so make sure that mm -hmm. yes, even though we have several synonyms, the particular one you are going to use should fit in things the same as Apple. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's now clear. Before it was. It was us. All right, thank you. This is because rice does not take the article an and therefore cannot fit into the passage. Mm -hmm. However, if an an is also underlined, for example, an upward surge, then either an increase or a rise scores. If a candidate writes increase or rise alone, he will not score because th there are no articles attached to the increase and then the rise. So in simple terms, make sure if there is an article, you also introduce an article. That's but what about increment? There is an increment uh -huh. in prices of imported goods. Yes, anybody to Whenever a question is asked, I will want all of us to discuss it before maybe I also come in with whatever I have to say. Um, um, increase. Increase. Mm -hmm. um. Okay, the, the increment the, will be used when the in is taken off. When the in, I, N. Hey. It will replace off. The A, N, or I, N. The I, N. <laughs> okay, anyway, that, that is what he thinks. What about you? Yeah, I think that the increase here, the first increase is something like a verb. The increment is a noun. Hey, are you sure increase is a verb? <laughs> to, to increase something. <laughs> uh, that is fine. That is okay. But look at how it is being used in the sentence here. An increase uh, in. Okay. <laughs> so what okay. action is being performed there? Okay. Aha. Increment is correct, please. Oh, okay. It is correct. It is correct. It is correct. You have several Thank synonyms you. that we can use. Yes. So you can say increase, increment, augmentation. Okay. Yes, it's correct. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Let's look at the next point, please. Another thing a candidate has to observe is that he must, and please, I'm using he to refer to any, uh, uh, any, any anybody at all, okay? So pardon me, the, the ladies, or the, 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 yes, the women amongst us. <laughs> Another okay. thing a candidate has to observe is that he must always make sure that he writes only one answer. Only one answer. Please, before we continue, let me ask a question. Okay. One. Oh, we can hear you. Okay. And the underlying. Baba, is... Baba, please reframe it again because your line was breaking again. You can't hear me. Yeah, now it's clear.
Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, then I'm continuing. Thank you very much. Ah, yes, I said, let's take it that uh, upward search has been underlined, okay, without the article. And we said we can use what? Increase. Oh, increase. We can also use rise. But in providing your answer, you write increase or a rise. What is wrong with this answer? Hello? They, 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 they are different in meaning. Yes, can you help? Explain yourself. In the context of rice, it doesn't uh, uh, fit the, the context of this, uh, the question, uh, the word upward said. I li just listened to the answer I gave. I said the underlined group of words there will be upward search without the and. And then the candidate in providing his answer says, let's say that's question one. He says, increase or a rise. Yeah. Such a candidate was called zero. Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah this, I'm listening. It doesn't make the sentence complete in the sense that it's going to sound like this. There is an a upright and doesn't make any meaning to me. That's great. You realize that the very first one, the increase is very correct. But because you are giving us an alternative answer with an article which is wrong, it makes everything wrong. You don't even get half of the mark. I hope you are okay. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you go ahead. That's fine. So I said another thing a candidate has to observe is that he must always make sure that he writes only one answer. This mm -hmm. is because if a candidate writes two alternative answers to a question and one is correct while the other is wrong, he will score zero for that answer. Mm. It is only when both answers are correct that he will score a full mark. Mm. Okay. The time allowed for these sections is not enough for a candidate to write unnecessary things. Mm. <laughs> you have only one hour, 20 minutes to answer a lot of questions. So why will you waste, let me use the waste time to be writing unnecessary things? Go straight to the point. Mm. Good. So don't go and be giving options. If it is increase, increase. That one has no article, and that is it. But you go and say increase or a rise. The <laughs> second alternative will definitely give you a score of zero. All right. Not the following very well. I have prepared it such that if you take it and then go through, even if you are in grade 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 four, you should be able to answer it, <laughs> understand it. Perfectly. Avoid giving two or more alternative answers to a question. What I just said, I have just decided to summarize them here. Example, an upward surge means increase or a rise. In an answer like this, a rise would be accepted while increase will will not score and therefore the candidate will score zero. Mm. Whereas if he had just written a rise, it would have scored a full mark for him. Okay. 
God. Second point, if the word underlined has an article, like we, are, we, are, we, are, we have already seen, the candidate should make sure his answer also has an appropriate article. If the word has no article, the answer should not be given an article, as simple as that. Example, a master, there is an article. So the, word we can, the one we can use for it is what? An expert, also with an article. Upward search, no article. So increase is what we can use for it without an article. Semant, semant, no article. So we have what? Overcome. Ubiquitous, come on. So you see the way I have arranged them for you to see. Candidates are to take note that answers to comprehension questions are not supposed to be in sentences, except it is stated categorically. What do I mean by this? We'll see very soon. Recommended answers are in most cases in phrases, clauses, and at times in single word forms. Let's go straight to the point and provide the answer. Example, let's look at the question. He runs like horse. He runs like horse. What figure of speech is this expression? Straight away, answer, simile. But he runs like a horse, has the figure of speech. Comprehension, just go straight to the point and answer it. Further, it is a waste of time for the candidate to write the answers to questions based on meanings of words or expressions as follows. A master means an expert. It is not necessary. The question says write a word or a group of words which means the same as the underlined word and can replace it in the passage. So if the first one is a master, when you are answering, you write I, just provide your answer straight away and expect and move on. The examiner has the marking scheme and then just marks accordingly. If you go and say a master mean an expert, what is wrong with the sentence? A master mean an expert. What is wrong with it? You have, re you have repeated the question before the answer. No. A master mean an expert. There is something wrong with it. A master. A master mean an expert. Definition of okay. Because the mean, because there's no S to the mean. Uh, it makes it one way or the other, a tautology. Good. Grammatical is incorrect. Subject verb agreement. A master means an expert. An expert. So you see why we say we shouldn't well be wasting time. You go and say a master, and then because specific. the mean is supposed to be means and it is wrong, you score zero, <laughs> even though you have an expert over there. Mm. So please go straight to the point. You don't have the enough answer. time at all. You just, you just go straight and then write the answer. An expert finished. Okay. Upward said means increase. increase. The word surmount means overcome. The word <laughs> ubiquitous means commonly found. Please, all these things are not necessary. Just go straight to the point and write them. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact that such a style of answering questions involves waste of time, there is the likelihood that the candidate will make a grammatical mistake, which will result in a deduction of half out of the scoring point. Mm. Example, surmount mean overcome attracts a deduction of half mark. And I say, why? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
because it's supposed to be what surmount means, but you go and write me, so definitely you lose half of the mark over there. So take note yeah. of these things. In answering English language comprehension questions, it is not advisable. And please look at advisable over here. A-D-V-I-S-A-B-L-E. -E. Unlike manageable, where we spell the manage in full with the E before we add A-B-L-E. The advisable here, the E is missing. So you know that to every rule, there is an exception. So A-D-V-I-S-A-B-L-E, not S-E-A-B-L-E. -E. So take note of this. So it is not advisable to repeat part of the question. For example, if there is a question like, why was the writer not able to achieve his aim? Why was the writer not able to achieve his aim? The answer should be either he fell sick or because he fell sick, but not the writer was not able to achieve his aim because he fell sick. <laughs> so the answer C is correct and acceptable. Answers A and B are preferable. Sorry, preferable. Considering the time allowed for this paper, repetition is a waste of time. Any other reason? I want to have left it for you to answer. If you have any other reason why you think you don't need to be quoting, can you give us any reason why you don't need to be uh, repeating part of the question? Well, there's not enough time in one place. There's not enough time, and you are likely bound to make mistake as you repeat the word. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very and much. Also, repeating it doesn't add you more any marks. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. So you see, I have K I S S over here. Kiss. It means keep it short and simple. That's all. <laughs> keep it short and simple. Kiss. Or miss, M-I-S-S, -S, make it short and simple. I always tell my students this. Let's go straight to the point. So what do I mean by that? I have in brackets, simple sentences. So use simple sentences, phrases, or clauses. Well numbered. You have to make sure you also number your questions properly. If it is A, B, C, write your A and provide the correct answer to the A. But there are people who answer the questions without the correct numbering and expect the examiner to read through and then <laughs> mark based on, please, it should be well numbered. Please, very important. Good. Again, in comprehension, lifting does not score. Lifting does not score. And what is the meaning of lifting? Lifting means taking an answer straight or direct from the passage. From the passage. The candidate should, yes, the candidate should use his own words please, the, to answer the question. There should, the there over there should be eliminated. I will do that before I forward it to you. The candidate should use his own words to answer the questions. Unless the question says specifically, quote from the passage, let us consider the short passage below and use it to answer the question that follows. Please, from the primary school and other areas, when you are introducing them to comprehension, no problem. If they are lift, we give it to them. But at this stage, you lift, you score zero. <laughs> Good. So let's look at the passage. Passage. From the judge's statement, it became abundantly clear that the main aim of sending a convicted person to prison is to make him reformed. 
For this reason, it has been suggested that in order to achieve this objective, facilities at the prison should be improved. This is a short passage. The question is, why is a convicted person to prison? Answer. To make him reformed. Somebody will say, ah, but to make him reformed, are you not also lifting from the past? Lifting is, and not yet, you are picking everything <laughs> in whole. That is what we mean by you are not supposed to lift. He is sent there to make him reformed, or he is sent there in order that he might reform. <laughs> Try as much as possible to be creative, okay? To be creative, that is all, to be creative. So we can use a part of it, but don't go and take it in whole. If it were to be summary, for summary, that one outright, that summary, you don't use any. You have to use your own words from start to finish. But for comprehension, at least you can take a part of it and then use it and make sure the meaning is very, very clear. Any questions so far? All right, meaning the students are understanding everything. Let's move on. <laughs> Any of these three answers will score, but if a candidate writes it became abundantly clear that the main aim of sending a convicted person to prison is to make him reformed. He will score zero because he has lifted the answer straight and direct from the passage. Let's go back to the passage. Don't. Sorry? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right. So just do, go and don't, don't go and lift directly from the passage. It became abundantly clear that the main aim of sending a convicted person to prison is to make him reform. People do this. They come out of the examination room and they say, Charlie, I wrote to. I wrote to. <laughs> the results come and then they're like, oh, what happened? I was cheated and blah, please, you are not supposed to lift. Okay, good. If on the other hand, the question says, quote from the passage, a sentence which shows why a convicted person is sent to prison, then the answer lifted from the passage will score because you are restricted. They say you are to quote, so just go straight and quote it. And with that one, make sure you put it in quotation marks. Max, when they say quote, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. Good. Candidates should be very careful about questions that demand quoting from the passage. Sometimes the question says, quote from the passage, the clause. Quote from the passage, the sentence. Or quote from the passage, the phrase. If the question says, quote from the passage, the sentence, the candidate must make sure he quotes only a sentence. If he quotes a phrase or a clause, he will not score. Similarly, quoting a clause or a sentence, if the question says, quote the phrase, will not score. Quote the score. So the thing is, if you are to quote a clause, quote a clause. If you are to quote a sentence, do as you have been asked to do. So note the distinction between a sentence, a phrase, and a clause. And we will try to explain these three so that at least when we see them, we'll be able to know them. A sentence, sentence is straight away. For the sentences, 
we can look at them in terms of their structure first. And for the structure, we can look at simple sentence. That's a straightforward, simple sentence. Then we have um, compound sentence, complex sentence, then compound complex. That is when we are looking at the structure of the sentence. Okay, then we can look at them as to what they are doing. Those that are interrogate, okay, the, the ones that interrogate, the ones that actually are imperative, they command you. For example, go away from me. Okay, this is an imperative statement. It's commanding you to do something. Then the interrogative one, the ones that usually end with question mark. Okay, do you know how to play tennis? Then the declarative ones. Okay, I am a Presbyterian. You are declaring. Okay, these ones talk about basically uh, uh, um, the functions they perform. But the structures, the simple sentence, it has only one main clause. I am sick, simple sentence. The boy came late. My bag and spectacles are missing. These are simple sentences. So make sure you just pick a sentence from the question, the passage, okay? It starts usually with a capital letter and ends with a full stop, and that is it. Or a question mark, depending on what it is doing in terms of its function, okay? But for the compound sentence, it's just like you joining two simple sentences together. Just as some of us have compound names, Okay, also understand your hyphenate, it becomes a compound name. So simple name, simple name together, a compound name. So we can have the compound sentences. So please, you make time and then do some research on the sentences, their types, so that when you are asked to quote a sentence, you look out for the sentence and quote it appropriately. But let's look at phrases. A phrase is an expression which has not got a finite verb. It has not got a finite verb. Okay. But what is a finite verb? A finite verb. It's a verb which has got a corresponding subject or a doer. A verb which has got a corresponding subject or a doer. So once you see the verb there, if you're able to identify a subject together with it, okay, then it becomes a finite verb. But once you see an expression which has not got a finite verb, then it means that expression is a phrase. So in other words, a phrase is a group of words which does not have a subject and a predicate. Please, why did I say does not have? Why didn't I use do not have? But I said does not have. Because you say a word. Read that. I said a phrase is a group of words which does uh, not yeah. have. Uh -huh. Because it's a uh, words, it should be uh, have. But if it's a word, then it no, will be hard. Please look at das. I'm, I'm using the verb to do, okay, to do. And I'm using does not. Don't you think because of words there, I should have said which do not? Please, it goes to all of us. <laughs> mm, the emphasis is not on the words. Uh -huh, but it's on... The sentence or the phrase? It is a group of, a group. Oh, a what? group. Aha. A group of words which does not. So it does not. So you realize that we can just replace everything there with the pronoun. It does not have a subject. So anytime you are confused, just try to use pronouns to replace everything there. And then you'll be able to get the correct verb to use okay good so and they said a 
In other words, a phrase is a group of words which does not have a subject and a predicate together. Together. Example, came late. Came late. But if we have, he came late, then we cannot say he came late is a phrase because there is a subject over there. But you just look at came late. Okay? So the came over here can be a finite or infinite, depending on how it is being used. So if we have he came late, that means it is going to work as a finite verb there. But as it stands now, came late in the garden from school, the boys prefect. All these are phrases. In all these expressions, one cannot find both subject and predicate together. So they are phrases. Simplicity that. What about clauses? A clause is a group of words which has got both subject and predicate. In other words, a clause has got a finite verb. Examples. Dennis stole the mangoes. Dennis stole the mangoes. So you see Dennis is the subject. And the predicate is stole the mangoes. That's the predicate, which has the verb stole over there. So what do you think stole the mangoes alone Okay, would have been? What do you think stole the mangoes alone will be? Stole the mangoes. Stole the mangoes. A phrase? Yes, correct. It's correct. So take a note. But because of the Dennis subject now added to it, the stole now becomes a finite verb. So Dennis stole the mangoes. So Dennis stole the mangoes is a clause. But when I write stole the mangoes alone, then that makes it a phrase. I suppose. Okay. The subject Dennis matches the verb stole, and the subject I matches the verb suppose. Okay, so these are clauses. We have types of clauses too the main clause and then the uh, subordinate clause. Okay, the main clause. Usually the main clauses are clauses that actually present a complete thought and they can usually stand alone in a sentence. But the subordinate, you know that you understand the word subordinate. Subordinate clauses are usually not complete in thought and they cannot stand alone in a sentence. Okay, that is, so please, as I said, just make sure you do a little research and get the differences between the clauses. All right. Please, any, any question? Any question? Yeah, Master. And, yes, no Master. Question. Yeah, can we go over the difference the, between the clause and the, uh, the phrase? All right. All right. For the clause, okay, first mm. thing is, Look out for a subject. Look yeah. out for a verb. Mm -hmm. Fine. So subject, the verb. Okay. And then possibly mm. an object over there. So S view. Fine. So if we have Dennis came to school. Grace is listening to the lecture. Okay, Grace uh. is listening to the lecture. That is a clause. But if I say, it's listening to the lecture, listening or listening to the lecture, 
you realize that it doesn't make so much sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yes, that is a phrase. But once okay. I bring in grace, it's listening to the lecture. Then it makes it a clause. So for the first one, okay, the listening. So when they say people should give finite and infinite verbs, they begin, and the verb becomes finite or infinite depending on the sentence depending on the sentence okay please if you have you are actually revising and you have any difficulty in an aspect of the english language be it grammar or any other you can whatsapp me directly okay and i will just make some notes and then send it to you and if you still don't understand i can still engage you in a video call and then explain it further Okay. Okay. Thank you. Please. I have, yes, yeah, since we are actually going to write uh, an entrance exam <laughs> regarding biblical issues and then other stuff, okay. I have actually chosen a passage that mm -hmm. will be of interest to everybody. <laughs> Read the passage carefully and use it to answer the questions that follow. Mm -hmm. Read the passage carefully and use it to answer the questions that follow, okay? So I am going to share the passage and then you read and answer the questions that follow. Please, I think I want you to rather Write these questions immediately. Write the questions briefly. You can use about two minutes to copy the questions and then we'll go back to the passage. Okay. Yeah, please do that. Find a word or a short phrase that means the same and can replace each of the following words as used in the passage. So once you can see the, the screen, you write, copy them quickly. When you are done, just alert me and I will go back to the passage.
Have you finished? We are copying all the questions, so we are still on it. All right, all right. Where is my pen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I was driving from Fanchami. I am here. I am here. I am here. I am here. I Chibia, I'm a Sakos Kubio. Was it? That should be a Masakos Kubio, said the idea. I say, Miss Sandy, I'm a school in the corner. I'm saying, let's say, just in other places. We actually do not understand some of these things. Can I go back to the passages, please? The passage, sorry. Just one two second. Remember. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
think for me, I'm done. Okay. Those who have not finished, we can still come back to it once you have most of the questions intact. I just okay. want to see. How, yes, I want to see how you are going to answer the questions based on the techniques we have looked at. Okay. Mm. All right. This is the very first uh, paragraph. If you are ready, you just tell me so that I move on to the next paragraph.
sorry. It goes off the screen. Pardon me, sorry, sorry about that. Um, It's not coming on. It's coming. Bye bye. Yo. Is it the second part? Yes. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Yeah. Is it the All second right. part? This is the first part. So this is the second part, please. What are you doing over there? Are the questions difficult? 
Luciano. Sorry. <laughs> Are the questions difficult? Come on, Casa. Tricky. The questions are tricky, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yes. And I actually searched for a passage that <laughs> is actually related to what you are going to do, what you really want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Papa, what are the questions that follows? I, I actually ask them to copy the questions first before going first. back to the passage. Uh, yeah, so, so they actually copy the questions initially. I have not finished this one to ask him. Keep him. Is um, that is uh, okay. What do you? What do you say about this business? I can't ask this about this. It should be done by now. Four reasons why I'm looking down.
never let it. This network. Hmm. I have actually shared it in a Word document form so that you can see the whole passage now. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, is somebody driving and writing at the same time? Okay. I'll pack soon. Uh, please, please do. do. <laughs> we, 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 we need you alive, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm Hello. Hello, Papa. Hi. Yes, I, 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 I think, I think you know what I want to do for this one. I really want you to do it and submit it and let me mark. Yes. So let's, so, let's um, discuss it later. Yes. 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 Uh, this very one, I want you to actually work it out and then you present it as if you are actually writing an exam and you meet these questions. Okay. How will you tackle them? So use the techniques. Okay. Yes. So please, I'll, I'll, be, I'll actually be, 
uh, posting the slides on the WhatsApp platform. You can get it and then print them out. Then use them to guide you, the techniques to guide you to answer this. If can, 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 can you make the answers available to me tomorrow? Yes. 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 So just please just give yourself uh, 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes maximum. And then answer the questions. Okay. So as I said, just go straight to the point. Keep it short and simple. No unnecessary words. And then just go straight to the point and answer them. Look at the tenses and then the, 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 the words. Those, if there is an article and what have you, just make sure you use them appropriately and use that to answer. So that tomorrow, please, my, my WhatsApp line is over there. You can write it in ink. Take a screenshot and then you send it to me. I'm okay with that. If you want to type it and send it to me too, I have no problem. Okay. Okay. Yes. So Thank please, you. yeah, please let us try as much as possible to do it. Everybody should do it. Everybody should do it. So that we I, I see the challenges and then I address them accordingly. I have I have solutions from two different students, okay, who wrote uh, SSC. And I have their solution. This one is marked out of 20. Okay, so one student managed to get 15, 16 out of 20, and another student had five and a half out of 20. So I'll be sharing how they actually answered them to score such marks with you. So try and let me have yours so that I also mark and then we discuss afterwards. So tomorrow, deadline, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So I'll, please, I'll be posting this on the WhatsApp platform so that you can actually have uh, uh, it handy and then use it accordingly. What a calamity. Press B, press B, press B. Don't joke with us. Abangula <laughs> Baba. I want to do it and then submit it tomorrow. No, that will do. At the moment, it's 1 a.m. here in Australia. Yes. That's okay. But I said you give yourself 15 minutes maximum for this very question and then answer and submit it to me. Don't post it on the platform. Send it to me privately. And I'll mark, and then we we'll discuss later. All right. 